So I'm working on this 2013 Volkswagen Touareg. This thing is getting water accumulation underneath the intake manifold. I have this bore scope so I can actually check down here into the intake manifold and I'll show you how I'm doing that. This particular brand is actually not the best, but it does work. But basically, let's see if you can see that. Actually, I can turn the light off. Here. Yeah, you basically feed it clear down there. Okay, there we go. So you feed it clear down there, and you can actually see. You can tell if you're leaking water or not. You just put, you just feed this down there, and you look. You look for wet antifreeze or oil. More likely than not, though, it's going to be antifreeze if it's going to be anything. Okay, so you can see where I'm fishing it in. Here, you can get a close up of that. It's right there at the intake manifold. You just feed it down there and get a view of the actual bore scope. Make sure you can see that good. Okay, so you can see down there there's no there's no fluid buildup really. Everything down there is bone dry. Let's get a good look around. Mostly you want to look at the lowest you want to look at the lowest point in the valley because that's, that's obviously where the fluid is going to build up. If you run through the diagnosis process and you find antifreeze accumulated underneath your intake manifold, these are the parts that you're going to have to replace. These are the parts that are up top of the engine. I don't know that I would recommend getting this Febby oil cooler. You might want to just get the OEM gaskets. These aluminum parts almost never go bad. The dealership charges a lot of money for this aluminum, but these gaskets you can get for a pretty good deal. We got three of them. Got the part number, that one, and that one. We got this coolant outlet flange. That's gonna be the part number for that. You can see that there. We got, what is this? Which engine coolant? Oh, this is a big one actually. So when you buy this flange, for whatever reason, that does not come with this O-ring. The O-ring is a dollar and you absolutely do not want to reuse this O-ring. So go ahead and buy that. Get uh, six of these with the intake manifold. See that? Quantity is six. Part number is there. The intake manifold gasket. You got some more intake manifold gaskets. You got six of those. Look, that's the part number there. How do you plan on gaskets? Another part for your intake manifold. Part number is there. Another intake manifold gasket. Part number is there. You just need one of those. You don't have to buy this if you don't want to. We did for this job. It's the EGR cooler assembly. That's the part number there. As you can see, this, this part right here is very, very expensive. We got this gasket. This is for the EGR where it recirculates into the intake manifold. This part actually, this is on the engine. It goes to that pipe that attaches it to the intake manifold. Actually, not intake manifold, intake plenum really is what it is. We got that coolant hose. That's a good one to get. This hose is located underneath the intake manifold. We got this one. Part number's there, underneath the intake manifold. We got this piece right here. It's a Volkswagen thermostat, bypass valve or something. And that's the part number right there. These are the parts that are located on the front of the engine, at the front ceiling flange, basically. You got this part, this is your main part. This part's really hard to find. And it's there's a good chance this is the part that's actually leaking these bolts you got six of those got this oil filter housing gasket it's a pretty good one to buy this one may or may not work for you you have to see if you if your VIN number requires the one requires this part number which is the one that's just rubber or there's another one that looks very similar but it has an aluminum backing it's a different part number it's a different part you have to know which one you have 
you got 32 of these these are the bolts that go to the front ceiling flange this is a part number here this is highlighted because the, these are the aluminum bolts it's possible that you might have the steel bolt which that one's a different part number and it's a different part and the torquing sequence is going to be different for that one so you have to know which one you have there which like this one you should be able to know from your VIN number you got the front main sill that's a part number there you got the those eight bolts you got the water pump I forget but this actually oh I think this goes to the water pump pulley I think that's what that was and you got three of those and then you got the drain, drain plugs it needed it on this one it's two dollars it's not expensive I almost forgot to mention you're also going to need some antifreeze get like two or three gallons of that get yourself an oil change kit Just figure out whichever one is going to work for your car because you're going to have to drain both the oil and the antifreeze you might be tempted to get some parts that are not OEM. As you can see here, this Fabi brand is like $38 versus the OEM is $66. You can scroll down, you can kind of see the price differences. But I absolutely recommend that you get the OEM for all of your parts. I would not waste your time getting a part that is not OEM. As far as what tools you're going to need, obviously you need like a basic I have like a basic toolbox with basic sockets, ratchets, screwdrivers, specialty tools. You have to have something like this. You see what that looks like there. This is a really good one that I have. Pretty much you need T30, T20. Uh, that was probably it, honestly. Oh shoot. Yep. And then you need this tool, T40048A. I was able to buy this off of ECS tuning for like half the cost of anywhere else I was seeing it. And then I got this cut this toolbox from Amazon that I you know it's like a custom box, I guess, custom build. And then you will need this. You really need, just need one size, and it's the T30, I believe. But you need one that's like slim. See that? Because one bolt is going to require this. And I just got this from Home Depot. You are going to need a tire pen, tire paint. One of these. Absolutely, you need one of these. And then I got a. These scrubbers from Harbor Freight, they were really cheap. You got plastic, whatever this is, and then you got the copper. And so, yep. You're going to want to get yourself a long T30. That's going to come useful when you're doing the intake manifold, plus several other parts. You pretty much need this tool. You are going to need a torque wrench. I actually needed two torque wrenches because the first one was like for the mid torques. And then this one was like for the smaller torques. This, these are capable of doing like an angle gauge. So you wouldn't have to buy this too. And so, but you do need to have the ability to do angle monitoring for your torque specs. You are going to need a shop vac to suck up your antifreeze and oil. It's going to make a big mess. You're also going to need a container like a splash container to catch your oil and antifreeze. I've already pulled the manifold and replaced everything underneath it. I got the EGR cooler. And what else is under there? The oil cooler. That flange everybody talks about. And that expansion valve. Oh no, the bypass valve. We got that done. Basically, every, pretty much everything under here has been replaced. But we are still getting antifreeze accumulated down there there's one other option that it could be that we're going to attempt to fix which is the part on the front cover and you can see this water pump 
has dried coolant coming from it that you can see it's on both sides so we'll be replacing the water pump as well so before I do this job I just did an oil change on this so the oil in here is brand new I'm gonna save this oil and not waste it because it's about $70 on this car what you can do is you can actually you can get a vacuum you can pop this open stick the vacuum hose there turn it on and then you can drain you can pull the plug and it will just it will not drip from the drain plug it'll just gargle and then at that point you can switch, you can put your thing you can put a clean container underneath there and get it there's plenty of videos online where people show you what to do up top here but it's really hard to get information on how to do everything up front so I'm gonna go ahead and document the process of me doing it so that there's at least one video available that just gives you like a start to finish of how to do it and it includes all of the technical information because some of these bolts by the way will need to be replaced and you have to follow the torque specs and the torquing sequence you do not want to you do not want to mess that up otherwise you're gonna be coming back in here and tearing this thing back apart I'm hoping I can do this front cover area tear down without having to take apart the intake manifold again we'll find out so it turns out in order to complete this job I can do everything right here without pulling this stuff apart except the there's a hose on the other side of this for the hose clamp you have to it is located right underneath the EGR cooler the first step of this process is just going to be taking all the front pulleys off of here just unburying that front cover and once we've done that where the job is just about there so step number one I'm going to remove this hose and get this out of the way I'm going to pull that pull that and then this aluminum hose we got to get this out of here what do we got? Got a bolt there, bolt there, and a bolt there. Got another bolt there. So I'll remove all those. We'll see if that gets it. So this is interesting. I took off that pipe and I can see we had some oil splashing around somehow. I don't know what exactly it is that caused that. But maybe I'll know once I tear this thing completely down. You can see. This area is just wet with oil. Huh. We'll get a better look at it once I take off this serpentine belt and all of these other pulleys. By the way, these are T30, it looks like. Turns out this black hose has to come off right now before we can get this one. We might end up having to pull. I think we do. I think we do have to pull this entire thing. We got, it's probably a math sensor right there. Um, how else does that connect? I don't know. I'll figure it out and then I'll document it. Looks to me like it's just straightforward. Just there. And then there with the map sensor, but we'll find out. Alright, in order to do this, I'm probably going to pull this hose. Because I'm going to have to be draining the coolant anyways. Because we're going to be pulling the water pump and the front timing cover. So it's going to be a little bit of a a little bit of a mess so I'll pull this here it's just a, a thing you pull up you, you just pull that thing up and then pull the pop the hose right off it's easy and then you can see you got those Torx bits right there and right there and this goes into the intercooler it looks like so I got these two bolts pulled and that coolant pipe I stuck a pan underneath so that it doesn't just leave a big mess there's actually two bolts right here see that so I got the first one it is a bolt you can't see it let me grab something else that is a bolt right there oh man I can't get it basically right right there you see it yep right there that is a bolt so this thing does not come off until you get that existing one there so I'm just taking this part out 
the thing I decided, I went ahead and I tightened this thing back up. I'm going to see if I can get this all in one unit. Because I'm pretty sure I can. And it, it's going to be a lot easier if I could do that because there's no sense in taking it out piece by piece and having to reassemble it. And you can see there's like a coupling right there or whatever you would call that. And then it goes down and then I think it bolts something right here. And then it goes, there's a hose clamp here. But I'm going to see if I can just pop this thing up and get it from right, get it from right here. We'll, we'll try that out. This intercooler hose is a little bit more of a process than I realized. I'm still going to try to get it all in one piece, but you can see way down there, maybe. Yep, you see that hose clamp. And I'm going to get a thing so I can point. I'm going to get a pointer. See the hose clamp clear down there? The one I'm tapping? That one. I'm going to pull that. And then there's uh, one bolt right there. You can see it. I believe that's all I'm going to have to do. Then this thing should come out. And for reference, that's where I'm at. See, yep, way down there. Okay, I finally got this thing figured out. So I guess you do want to go ahead and disconnect it. So don't get it all in one unit. Disconnect it on this one. And I grabbed, uh, what size is this? What size is this? Okay, this is a 9. 932 that's what that is yep 932 I stuck it there this is a the tiniest wrench stuck it there loosened it up and I was able to get that one and now it actually gives plenty of access to this bolt down here I got it without this removed and it was a pain so don't even waste your time with that just get this one first and then loosening that one you're gonna have to go underneath it's not that tight you don't need a have the car lifted up or anything I actually got some old carpet here that I use as a almost like a creeper but it's 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 pretty good actually it's more com comfortable than the concrete so I recommend it so yeah I'm gonna pull this one now should be able to come right up okay so I got this thing loose but this thing is really tight in there it's not attached to anything, it's just, you know, it's tight and it's kind of stuck. I'm going to be removing this fan shroud, in, the fan shroud anyways. I did some research on this. I don't think you can do this job with this fan shroud here. So, since I'm going to be remo removing this fan shroud anyways, I'll just, I'm going to leave this pipe here. It's too tight to pull out. I'm going to pull the fan shroud out and then I'm going to get the pipe. This fan shroud should be simple enough. You got the one connection there. You got the clips on the side like normal. This side too. You got this wire you, get, you got to deal with. And that should be it. I guess one last thing I forgot about this fan shroud. The coolant hose is bolted like that. The bolt over here is actually missing. But that's not a big deal. It'll be fine. This fan shroud is really interesting. I've never seen anything like it. So it clips in right there. In order to pull it out, you actually, with a screwdriver, you just press it that way. See that? And it releases. You do that on both sides, and then you can lift up. You can lift it up from that. That one. That one. Yeah, you just go like that and lift up. Okay, so that went pretty smoothly. I pulled the fan shroud out first, and then I was able to pull out the second pipe very easily. Now that I actually have the thing pulled apart, you can see how bad these oil leaks up front really were. I'll do a quick, um, I'll give you a quick view of it.
we're going to be replacing all of the oil seals up front so the oil leak causing all this mess is going to be replaced during this job over here is actually pretty bad it's actually wet as well but yeah I'll get this I'll get this thing out of my way just pulls right out and I can just set it to the side and then the next step is going to be pulling the serpentine belt and just the pulleys really actually before I pull the serpentine belt I'm gonna crack these loose for the water pump so I'll crack these loose for the water pump and then I will pull the belt, the belt off and then I can pull this pulley off and then I can pull the water pump off and then the rest of it's just going to be pulling the rest of the pulleys. So cracking these water pump bolts loose I noticed this is the first special tool that you need for this job. It's an M10 and I got this kit off Amazon for pretty cheap. It's not expensive. And I, I already had it before doing this job luckily. Yep, yeah, that's what, that's what you're going to need.